for joining me for another edition of This Old Fender. I'm Scott, and this here is a 62 Fender Jazzmaster, serial number 85641. We'll be working on that, and that's all I got here this week. Jazzmasters, Mustangs, Tellies with two pickups, high range humbuckers. They comes in waves, I tell you. One week it'll all be acoustics, and the next week it'll all be two pickup Fenders. Well, let's have a look at this baby. Okay, just like a couple weeks ago when I had the 64 Strat in, it's the same setup. It has that thin veneer of rosewood on the top and the fretboard. It has the dirty clay dots. The high E string, sometimes it pops out. I just think that the nut slot has gotten a little sloppy and we might be able to, to add some of that glue boost white to this edge. To help this string out a little bit, keep it from popping it in and out. That is pretty cool. It's in pretty good shape. No skunk stripe. Serial number. Got some nice wear on it. A little buckle rash. Same three-tone sunburst that we had on that strat. Another thing I want to look at is the brake angle here. Sometimes this string flops around and it could be because this is decked all the way down. So what I'd like to do is uh, get this bridge up a little bit, give the string a little better brake angle. And I can do that by placing a shim in the neck pocket. And this is one of the other jazz masters that is in the shop right now just want to compare the the height of the bridge with the 62 jazz master see there's a good I mean it's like a there's like a time zone between the bridge and the pit guard on this one compared to the old 62 so I think it would be a good thing may as well just try a uh, neck pocket shim and if it if it doesn't feel right, we can take it out. Before we get too carried away, I want to listen to the electronics. See if we need to yeah, we need to clean up some of these uh, some of these pots need cleaned. That's the rhythm circuit. Here's the regular circuit. me though. We'll see if it cleans up and if it uh, needs a new one we'll put a new one in. I'm going to see about fixing this little slot. I ordered some of that uh, nut repair powder from Stew Mac but I won't get that for till the end of the week. I'm just going to use my old tried and true method of super glue and accelerate all first I file gotta rough up those edges It's a, it's really V-shaped. Like a really. Naphtha to clean. Baking soda.
little bit of Stumac number 10 water thin super glue. A little bit of uh, glue dry accelerator. Okay, it's so bad it needs a double dose. Look at that, quick and easy fix. Good to go. Now, I'm gonna take the pick art off. I'm going to clean all the pots. Try and take off the neck. And we'll put in a shim. See what happens. Okay, here we go. We got some pots to clean. I got the deoxid five. Let me just spray the crap out of that thing. Same for the tone. Okay, the, the pickup lead broke off. We'll have to get the soldering pen out and re-solder that. Old connection there, damn it. Alright, let me finish cleaning these babies. like some grease on it or something. Let's try to wipe it off. Maybe even clip it off.
Yeah, it's real greasy or waxy or something. Dirty. Dirty and old. Put this baby back together before she shrinks up on us even more. Shrinkage. Significant shrinkage. Okay. So what we have here with the uh, bridge is there's a little leg that comes out. This one was in, it was pulled back as far as possible on the treble side. You see it poking out there now? That's what we're going to need to do is, is raise this up a little bit to get a better brake angle, string brake angle towards the tailpiece and put a neck shim in there to create, create, uh, correct that problem. So this gets it up above the pit guard now next neck shim time now I'm over here on the dark side of the moon all right the neck came right out what's that say 63 hey they told me it was a 62 63 works though better take a photo of that for him and uh, get you a neck shim so when I was looking at the, the end of the fretboard, I noticed a little bit of a ski jump taken off here, and that little shim that they always put in there at the factory would be the culprit. I'm a firm believer that that does cause a ski jump. So it's unfortunate, but they didn't know at the time that was going to happen over the course of uh, 50 years. Let's put a one degree shim in there. I'm going to place this in there, but when we look at the guitar on its edge, we'll notice this butt white shim under that amber colored neck. So I'm going to brush on this color, which is a uh, honey maple tone brush tip marker from Mohawk, and help it blend in. Okay, great news. The uh, re-soldering of the uh, neck pickup worked out great. The cleaning of the volume and tone worked out great. But this is the new problem. Um, the bridge pickup's too far down. And, oh, take a look at the shim there. That's what the shim looks like when it's installed. Um, I need to get some foam underneath this bridge pickup. It's like half as loud as the neck now. So, all the pots cleaned up great. Switches sound good. It looks like I'm just going to have to take the pick iron off one more time. See if I can get some see if I can get some lift under that thing. And then she'll be beautiful. I can even raise this more. 
Looks like the action's even lower than I had it before. Take a look at how this foam has solidified over the years and become real hard. I'm going to put in this. This is going to get it up actually pretty high. That's, that's a pretty decent piece of foam right there. Okay, I got some double-sided tape right there. Keep these where I put them. And very careful. Back in place. All right, that was that was a great guess. It makes all the difference in the world. Can you see that height difference there? Beautiful, and the action's way too low, so I can actually bring the bridge up, which is more good news. So this is so similar to that '64 Strat. It even has the same like strap indentations on the lacquer here that the 60 the 64 had and it also has like i don't know if you remember i was trying to show you that there's a lot of overspray from the red there's like it's like super speckled all the way everywhere like there's so much overspray like you don't see that these days the spray guns are just different like you know, the overspray would end somewhere around here. You wouldn't see it all the way down into the middle. All this speckly stuff. It's like a speckled Easter egg or something. Look at all that. Can you believe that? But it's the exact same paint. Everything's the same. It's so cool. Well, this one's probably worth 10 grand. That strat was worth maybe even close to thirty thousand dollars but this one we're gonna have to say about ten thousand don't touch that dial guys i just did a little sound check with these old strings <laughs> it sounds so good i'm gonna get some uh brand new 10 through 46 nickel strings on here Dario and Plug her into the Marshall. I'll give you a little sound check. Lemon oil, that cool, refreshing drink. Rub a dub dub, three men in a tub. Rub a dub dub, rub a dub dub. Like, what in the fuck were three men doing in a tub, anyways? Were they. Were they. Were they small men? Were they the Three Stooges? I don't know. I mean, you gotta wonder. What the hell was going on? Was it a big tub? What the hell? I mean, sitting in a tub full of someone else's filth? That's just gross. <laughs> Thank you. 
this week, guys. I appreciate it. I hope to see you next week. Have a good one. We'll catch you later.